Hi, I am Kenzie. I am one of the 4-H agents here in Adams County. So I work over the animal projects. So any of our animal projects, um, that's my focus area. That's what I know best. And I usually know enough to be dangerous in some of the other areas. But Julia is our lead 4-H agent. I'll let her introduce herself as well. Hello, everybody. I am Julia Hurdlebrink, and I oversee all of the tabletop projects with the exception of shooting sports. So those are things like the cake decorating, leather craft, sewing, model rocketry, all of those kind of projects. So if you have questions, I'm happy to answer any of those. Awesome. So tonight we are going to be talking about fair prep, what to expect at fair, how to prepare for fair. Um, and this year it's going to still look a little bit different. We're not completely normal. Um, if you guys have experienced a full-on normal fair, which our last one was 2019. Um, so whether you're a veteran member or whether you're a brand new member, this is a great workshop to be on so that you know what to expect coming into fair this year. So as I was saying, we are at nearly normal on the 4-H side of our fair. Um, so kind of what that looks like, you guys, is some of the things that are coming back that we consider normal during our, our normal fairs that we've gotten used to over the years. Um, so it'll look different from last year, right, during our full-on COVID fair, but some of the returning normals. So we have almost all of our livestock and animal classes have returned and are being offered this year. Um, we are once again having general and FCS, so those tabletop projects, uh, we're doing interview judging with those again last year. We weren't, or excuse me, this year. We weren't able to do that last year. Um, when we are at any of our 4-H shows or events, it is currently looking like unlimited spectators can come and watch and everything, which we're so excited to have back. Um, for our animal show side of things, if you were with us last year, we had all sorts of stuff to space you guys out, social distance, um, and so that made it look a little different of how we ran the show rings. Uh, we are going to be doing completely normal show rings. Um, we won't have to do that excessive social distancing this year. And junior livestock sale is coming back for our market animal members, so that's one of the most exciting parts. And for our animal kids, again, wash racks are going to be available. They weren't available last year. And then for general and FCS, those tabletop projects, those will actually get to be on display throughout the week this year, which we're excited about. So you guys can see how you place, the public can see um, how you placed in your ribbons and everything like that. Um, the few things that are still going to be a little wonky for us this year um, is... Masks will not be required, but they will be encouraged. So members, families are welcome to wear masks um, if they choose so, especially if they're unvaccinated. Um, attendee number limits. No way I have that. I don't think I was supposed to put that there. Ignore that. <laughs> there, oh, I think that's supposed to be on the other side. The whole, we're not limiting how many spectators, parents, everything like that can come. So that's going back normal. Um, animal shows, this is probably the biggest wonky part of our fair is we are going to remain on a more or less one species per day show schedule. The big thing that that means is unlike a normal fair year, um, the animals will be not be stalling all week. So they'll more or less arrive the morning of their show. And then once the show wraps up in the afternoon or early evening, they will depart. And another thing because of that structure, we won't be able to do round robin contests for the animals. And because we're not doing overnights and stuff, there won't be 4-H camping this year. So those are the big main things that we're excited to be able to bring back and the things that make us not quite normal yet. So any questions, we will go into this stuff in more detail, but if you've got any big questions, put them in the chat and we will cover those. Alrighty, you guys. So for my new members, because I know we have a handful of newer members or potentially last year-ish was your first year. 
um, on board just to let you know what, what FAIR looks like for your different projects. What are you even expected to do at FAIR if you wanna participate, right? Um, so Julia is gonna go over what kind of FAIR looks like in a general sense for our tabletop projects. So that's those general and FCS projects. So you kiddos that are doing, I think we had visual arts, we had quite a few cake decorators on um, that science. This is what to expect for this side of FAIR. Wonderful, thanks, Kenzie. So for FCS and general projects, um, I encourage you to reach, to look at the premium book. Um, there is all of the exhibit requirements in there. Every project has different requirements depending on what it is. For cake decorating, you will make a cake, obviously. Um, for some of the projects like Vet Science, you make a poster. So it just depends on which which project area it is as far as what you will bring. So when you come to the fair, um, we will have a project drop off for your projects and that will be on Mon or on Sunday, August 1st, with the exception of three project areas. And that's going to be cake decorating, foods, and uh, gardening vegetables, bringing fresh vegetables. Those are the three that you will be able to bring with you on interview judging day, which is August 2nd. All other projects will be dropped off on Sunday, August 1st. So we know what projects will be there and we can verify who has what and figure out judging and stuff like that for the following day. So what you will bring is your project display. And that, like I said, it could be your, a poster, it could be a cake, it could be a leather craft project, whatever it is, as well as your record book. All projects require a record book. So when you're doing a record book, um, it basically tells the judge what you've done throughout the year, what activities you've been involved with, and then the story is a hugely important thing um, to include to so that people understand your, that's your opportunity to tell judge everything you've done throughout the year, what you learned, what you had problems with, how you overcame those problems. So the story is very important. So all those things will come with you on when you drop off your projects for interview judging. Um, we will have interview judging. That is something we're bringing back this year, and that will be on Monday, August 2nd. Um, please watch the forecast as far as how we will be scheduling interviews. We're still in the process of figuring all of that out. It is not required that you do an interview, but it is highly encouraged that you do an interview. If you do decide not to do an interview, there will be an interview form like last year that you will fill out and put in your record book so that the judge has some information from you specific to your project area. Um, we will be like Kenzie said, we are bringing back project displays, which is awesome so that all of the community can see all of the amazing things that you have done um, this year. So those will be up. Um, we will release projects on Monday, August 8th. After fair is all over, you will come back and pick up your projects. If you are one of those people that can send your projects to state fair, you are welcome to leave those projects with us and we will pack them up so that you can take home your ribbons because we don't take those to state fair, the ribbons, the score sheet, all of that kind of stuff. And we do ask that your project get packed to go to state fair. So if you're taking a cake, there will be different deadline to bring that back to us for state fair so that it's fresh. We're not gonna necessarily take the cake from the county fair because it's gonna be in a hot, muggy, they just don't do well sitting in humidity and stuff like that. So more information will be coming on how to set up for interviews and information on state fair and stuff if you're qualified for that. And I did see that there was a question in the chat for cake decorating. Do we do a cake, the record book and a display trifold? No. So for cake decorating, you're gonna do your record book. That is something you're gonna do. And then you're gonna bring a cake. So in cake decorating, it's required that you have four practice cakes prior to fair. And then your fifth cake is your display cake. So you will bring your cake. So if you're in unit one, you'll bring your cake that has all edible items on it, already decorated, made beautiful. You bring that with, to, with you on interview judging day and your record book. There's no display board for cake decorating, but great question. All right. Any other questions related to the FCS and general project areas on what that looks like this year? All right, Kenzie. Sweet. All right. So, and I do want to say, you guys, anytime we mention that there's like 
an arrival sign, there will be an arrival sign up time or a drop off sign up time or a check in sign up time. Uh, we don't have those links quite ready yet. So those are all to come and we'll communicate those to you guys. Um, but we have found that signing up for those types of things and signing up for a time frame um, is really helpful to our volunteers and our staff that are working the fair to help them not get backed up and everything. And then um, it makes it where you don't have to wait as long. And on the animal side, it makes it especially, it's especially important our animals don't wait as long on trailers and stuff. Um, so we've really found that beneficial. All right, so on the animal side, what does FAIR mean? Why would you wanna participate in FAIR? Um, what does it mean to exhibit your animals at FAIR, right? Because we are talking everything from our pocket pets, like we've got snakes and, and sugar gliders and everything all the way up to our cattle and our horses. So more or less what it looks like for your animal projects is you're going to bring your project animal to the FAIR um, on their show day this year. And you will then be stalling or pinning your animals um, for the day in the barn. Um, this for most of our livestock, they'll be penning in the barns. Um, so public can still come through and see those animals on that day. Horses are a little different. Horses basically tie at trailers out by the arena. Um, and our dogs are set up in in the same uh, building that we, we have the show in, so they don't have stalls necessarily. But, um, so you'll have your animals there for the day, and then you will show your animal in a variety of ways, depending on what species you have. Um, and so the judge is looking at your animal for either like your ability to show that animal, which is what we call showmanship, or the quality of your animal, um, how well you handle your animal, how well they do certain maneuvers and stuff like that, depending on what species we're talking about. So that's kind of what it is. You show in a bunch of different classes that you want to show in and get um, judged, and then you'll receive your judge feedback and placings after each class. Um, some of our animal shows this year that have kind of cumulative awards or whatever might do awards at the very end of the show. Um, so that's potentially like horse or poultry. Um, where it's not awarded after every single class, it might be at the end of the day. And then today, or excuse me, this year, for the most part, animals will then leave the grounds after the show has wrapped up and they will not be staying all week long this year. Um, there's a few little exceptions to that um, that we'll talk about here in a second. And then if you're raising a market animal, which is those animals that are being raised for meat, if they qualify for the junior livestock sale, they will be returning um, on Friday for that. And we'll cover that as well. So that is the gist of what it looks like to exhibit your projects at fair. It is a lot of fun, you guys. Um, outside of the 4-H events that we have, the commercial side of fair is planning to bring back things like um, concerts and I believe even the carnival and fun stuff like that. So um, there will be stuff to do in the evenings if you guys want to come back and everything like that. So let's see. So how do we get there? How do we get to fair? We've decided we want to do fair. It's like the most exciting part of the year, right? How do we get there? So the very first step, you guys, is to mark your calendar. Know what days you need to be where. Um, and so let me show you guys real quick. We do have our fair schedule up. It is in a Google. Let's put you guys away here. It is in a Google um, calendar, so you can sync it with your phones if you'd like. Um, but basically here on our, if you go to our Adams County Extension website, um, and then come down to fair information. We've got our entire fair page and this is where we're gonna navigate off of this year, or excuse me, tonight, you guys. So we've got our schedule of events. If we click on that, it's a pretty detailed schedule, especially since we're doing kind of day of shows and everything. Um, and we're always missing one or two things coming up. 
but for instance, what was I going to say? Um, making sure you know what is happening on what day. So this is a great place where you can find out what's happening on each day. The other place you can find that in more detailed show schedules and stuff like that. And drop off times and everything is in the premium book. So start here, know what day you're showing. Um, we've got this Google calendar. You can look at it in multiple views, however you like it. Um, but if you guys are taking notes now, or I will send out this presentation to everybody who registered tonight so that you can take a look at it and stuff. The general schedule, and I'm hoping I got this, Sunday is tabletop project drop off, correct? I got that right? Okay. Um, so guys, this is your general schedule. So take note of these days. Um, for your projects. So you know when you need to either drop your project off then come back for record book interviews. So that would be drop offs on Sunday the first for our tabletop projects in interview judging is on Monday the second. Um, or if you're doing animal projects, which are kind of the, the remainder of that week. Um, when those days are there's a couple things I want to point out you guys. Um, that we have two types of animal shows going on on one day. So on Saturday, the 31st, I don't think actually we have horse or llama kids on here, but we do have the horse show going on at the same time as the llama alpaca show. Um, so whenever we have conflicting shows, we always work with the show superintendents to make sure that kids can get to where they need to go and show when they need to show. Um, but just take that into consideration if you've got conflicts there um, and plan on getting animals, how to get animals where they need to be. Same thing with Sunday, August 1st. Uh, we have a few things going on. We have a horse show going on all day. Um, poultry show is going on all day. And then that is our tabletop drop off, which does not take very much time, but it is something to Remember to take your tabletop projects with you if you're bringing in animals that day. Um, let's see, oops, I'm not even in presentation mode for you guys. Um, and then the other thing I wanna point out, cause we do have some hog kids and Anna. Yep, this is exactly what I was gonna touch on. So great question. So you'll see here that on Monday, August 2nd, We've got our swine arrival and our processing. So we're lucky this year, we're able to, to actually stall our hogs overnight this year, which we're very thankful for. So our pigs are going to be coming in on Monday afternoon and evening, and we will process them. So that means checking their ear tags, weighing them off the trailer, and then you guys get them settled in stalls. And then those pigs will stay overnight in their stalls and we will start the actual swine show on Tuesday the 3rd in the morning. So that is basically one of our exceptions to animals only having a one day show is pigs are coming in the night before, we're letting them relax, get a good night's sleep before you guys have to show them the next day. The rest of our animal shows, so our goat, sheep, beef show, um, those are all you'll come in in the morning, we'll get everybody weighed, we'll start the shows, and they'll wrap up mid to late afternoon. Um, and then your animals will go home. Um, if they're a market animal for the sale, they will come back Friday afternoon or evening. Um, so if I don't think we have, we do have beef, one beef kid on here. If you've got a steer or a beef that is going through the sale, they can just, they'll basically just stay put on Friday after your show. So you don't have to leave the fairgrounds for two hours and come back. That would be a little ridiculous. So um, make sure you have those dates. So that is step one. So you know what days you're taking off of work, what days you're hauling animals, all that type of stuff. And what days you need to have your projects ready to be turned in for judging. Okay, step two, and Julia mentioned this already, read the premium book. It is what I like to call my fair Bible, um, because I cannot live without it. 
it is where all of the descriptions um, are for rules. It's where the schedule for the shows are. It lists every um, class that is offered so you know what different classes you can enter. And then the big thing on Julia's side with the general and the FCS projects is that it lists basically the parameters of, for instance, uh, actually, Julia, I'm going to let you say <laughs> how it lists those rules and what their, their exhibit should look like and stuff. So exactly what Kinsey said. So the tabletop side, so the FCS and general projects in the premium book, it it lists out specifically everything you need to know as far as what you need to bring for your project. So for cake decorating, it specifically says that you, for unit one, that you need to make four cakes in advance, and then you bring your display cake, so your fifth cake, and your record book. For um, vet science, it says to put together a display board related to one of the projects or one of the activities that you learned about throughout the year and bring a display board with your record book. So every project is outlined with what the requirements are. If you're looking through and you're confused or if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to help however I can. Awesome. So you guys, I went back to that fair page um, and I clicked on premium book and this is where you guys can find it. You're welcome to print out the sections you need. Um, it is broken out into our tabletop divisions up here. Um, so if we look at static exhibits, which is what we call our tabletops, um, you will see in a moment, um, basically, it goes through all those different projects. And so if we want to, and then it describes if you're having to do a poster, what your poster um, should look like. And let's see. So again, I said it lists classes. So animal science, we're doing um, vet science, for instance, and it'll tell you what classes are available so that when you go to enter online, you can like compare them side by side and know exactly what you're doing. And then you'll know that for instance, for vet, um, the vet science project, it says here that you have to have your project manual that you've been doing activities and, and learning in, and then your, your record book. Both have to come with your poster. Julia, please stop me if I am saying something wrong. <laughs> so no, you're saying exactly the right thing. So if you scroll up a little bit on the further up on that page, off to the right, it says a display board illustrating a topic uh, investigated during the project. So there's multiple parts. Um, so vet science requires you to, to turn in the manual. You are required to do so many um, activities out of the manual. And then you do a display on one of those things that you learned throughout the year and bring your record book as well. So this is true for all the projects in static exhibits, tabletop, same thing. And it'll explain ex specifically what you need to bring for your project. Perfect. All right, and then if we go back and we take a look at, for instance, oh, we had quite a few of you guys that are doing, um, that are doing poultry. Let's take a look at the poultry page real quick, just so you guys have an idea of what that looks like. So again, we said we've got our details on arrival for our poultry, where they're going to arrive in barn one. It's on Sunday between these hours. Um, and judging will start at 10 a.m. And here's the tentative schedule for, we'll do showmanship first, followed by breeds, um, followed by market. So it gives all those details, you guys. It tells you um, for animal projects, you do not have to bring your record book to the fair with you, um, unless you'd like to be an overachiever and take notes on what you're doing and everything like that. But you don't have to take bring your record book because you guys already did record book interviews last week. Um, but then when we go to enter our show classes or our classes for animals, it looks like this. We've got showmanship um, and then you enter the classes based on how old you are. Um, if we're showing animals based on their breed, we have breeds, right? And then it breaks it down. So this, if you have this right next to you when you're entering online, it is a huge, huge help to make sure you don't miss any entries. Um, 
So that is where you'll find the premium book. Um, please, please read it. Also, please read the rules. Um, so we have general 4-H rules and then we have our animal rules. Um, so this is where important rules come in, especially on the animal side that could, if you don't follow them, they could unfortunately end up getting you disqualified um, in shows if you're not fitting, grooming your animal appropriately, um, if you are administering medications or anything like that, um, that aren't pre-approved, all that type of stuff. So make sure you take a look at that so you're not accidentally breaking any show rules. All right, so that is step two. Step one was making sure you've got the dates in your calendar and step two is read that premium book, which is online. And then step three is actually entering your fair classes. Um, so this is different than um, when you've ID'd your, your animals in 4-H online, that's not a fair entry. Um, when you signed up for your projects in 4-H online, that wasn't a fair entry. Fair entry is a completely separate um, action. So, and the deadline to enter into fair is July 19th. So we've got a few weeks. Um, so plenty of time for you guys to hop on there, give it a try. If you run into any issues, reach out to us. Um, if you wait till the very last minute, there's a good chance we will not have time to answer all the questions um, and help you. So the sooner you can take a look at the premium book and then hop on, the better for entering FAIR. And again, FAIR entry is online. Um, let's see here make you guys sick. So again, we're on our FAIR premium book page. And if I scroll down to the bottom, we've got entry information and you can just click this link right here. The big thing, and it explains it right below you guys, is when you go to log on and do your FAIR entries, you're gonna wanna sign in with the green button, which is the same login that you guys use for 4-H online. So that's important because for my animal kids, it syncs with those animals that you ID'd, right? Um, so use the green button and then it'll walk you through and you'll add classes. There are no entry fees again this year. So that's an exciting thing that we were able to um, bring back from last year. So no entry fees um, with a few exceptions that might be day of fees for like carcass classes or um, Horse cattle classes. So you don't have to worry about the invoice and the payment at the end um, on those. All right, I've lost my chat. So hopefully, there we go. Have you released the sign up? So, a uh, great question, Nora. I have not released the sign up for dropping swine off on Monday or on Friday. Um, the Monday drop off for hogs or actually any arrival sign up time for animals or for tabletop, we don't quite have those ready yet. Um, so we will work to basically release those all at the same time. And, and we have handy um, fair checklists and everything to compile those on to make that easy, but we weren't quite ready um, for them tonight. So those are to be coming. Um, for any of those drop-off sign-up times and everything like that. Great question. All righty. So we have read our premium book. We have entered our FAIR classes in FAIR entry. So what's next? Um, this next one I'm going to kind of just skim over. Typically on a normal FAIR year, we do have parking passes. Um, they are typically limited to two passes per 4-H family, um, and they do typically have a cost to them. Are the fairs still working on the details of what fair passes will look like this year since um, it's a little bit of a wonky year? So we're not sure if there will be a cost to the parking permits for 4-H families this year, um, but we will be sure to um, communicate that as soon as we get those details from the fair staff. Um, as always, because there's gonna be a commercial side of the fair this year, um, 
just know that if you were coming between coming or going between the hours of 4 p.m. and 11 p.m., which is most of our animal shows will be wrapped up by then um, intentionally because of this, between 4 p.m. and 11 p.m. are typically high, high traffic times. So just being aware of that um, as you come and go. All right, so more information to come on those parking passes. We're not sure what that's gonna look like this year. And then what to pack. Julia kind of already touched on this for our tabletop projects. I don't know if you have anything to add, Julia. Sorry, I don't. So the big thing is um, your exhibit, whatever that is, and your record book. If you are not going to be able to do an in-person interview, there is an interview form that you will fill out and place inside your record books and turn in with your record books. Um, that form will be put online here shortly. <laughs> I was just updating it. So um, just know that if you are not going to be doing an in-person interview to please include that form, that's basically your interview with the judge, giving them all the information. And then if you are coming, you don't have to fill out that form. So just keep that in mind. And that will be put up on the website and sent out in the forecast. Awesome, thanks, Julia. On the animal side, it typically takes a little bit more to pack in for fair and be prepared for fair um, than on our tabletop side, simply because you might have multiple animals. Animals require a lot of stuff because we wanna keep them hydrated and looking pretty and all sorts of fun stuff. So some of the necessities that you guys might bring um, for your animals, depending on what species you're bringing in is um, stall or cage bedding, so shavings. Um, you are not required to use shavings this year because it is just day penning. However, I think you'd be amazed at how um, dirty animals can get real fast, even for one day in a, a stall. So I would personally recommend still bringing shavings for your stall for the day. Um, you will have to clean them out at the end of the day because we switch species every single day, but so shavings might be something you would bring. Um, buckets for water is an absolute must. Um, buckets for feed, whatever, feed pans. And then if you are bringing any feed, um, any of your grooming supplies, your halters, your chains, your collars, um, leads, your show sticks, anything like that. Um, this frozen mason jars here is for, typically it's for my Rabbit and KB kids, and I forgot to mention earlier when we were looking at the schedule, um, rabbits and KBs, we are not back to normal at all, unfortunately, um, due to the rabbit, rabbit hemorrhagic virus that is still present in Colorado. So um, we will not be having rabbits and KBs coming and showing live at the fairgrounds. So we won't be bringing any of those animals in this year. Um, they will be judged virtually, so through virtual submissions of pictures. And then we have a couple new classes that we'll be doing a workshop on here soon. Um, we're doing basically stuffed animal showmanship for our rabbits and KVs and um, a class called Members' Choice. So we do have some, some things that you guys can come do in person in front of a judge, um, but we just won't have your actual rabbit. So typically frozen mason jars are for those guys because it helps cool them off. Um, fans is a great thing to bring, even if it's just for the day, any crates, cages, spray bottles. So those are all the types of things that you might wanna bring even for just a day show you guys to keep your animals um, comfortable. So yeah, Lacey, basically the frozen mason jars, what we usually use them for, we fill mason jars up with ice when it gets really hot and our cavies and our rabbits start to overheat, they lay against them um, and it cools them down real nice. So let's see. And then you guys as members, there's different stuff. Make sure you dress appropriately. Um, it's it's 4-H uh, approved attire for, for tabletop interviews. Um, interview judging. So you don't have to dress up super fancy if you don't want to or anything for those, but it does have to be 4-H appropriate. Show clothes, we have what that is deemed appropriate in our 
um, livestock and small animal rules. Typically it is a button down shirt, um, nice jeans or something like that and closed toed shoes, preferably boots and stuff. So making sure you've got what you need there. And then as always, we love to see a happy, helpful attitude. Fair is fun, you guys, and it's supposed to be fun. So when we come with that attitude, it makes it so much better. All righty. So step six, arrival. What is arrival going to look like this year? Um, Julie, I'll let you add anything to that general FCS. We're getting a little redundant on some of this stuff. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, so we will be sending out um, how to sign up for interviews and stuff like that. So you will know what time you're supposed to come for interviews. Um, and you're just going to come. All of our projects for Tabletop will be entered and interviewed in the dome, which is a big round building on the fairgrounds. That's a change from where we normally are. And that's also where they will be displayed. So you will come at your scheduled time. Um, if you've dropped off your record book and your project, then it'll already be there for you. Um, if it's one of those ones that we've already talked about, the cake decorating, the foods and the vegetables, then you will bring those with you and check in and there will be signs to tell you where to check in for your specific places, for your interviews. Um, again, interviews are not required, but highly encouraged. And there is a form that you have to fill out to put with your record book if you aren't doing interviews. All right. And then on the animals, um, once again, a little more complicated. We are, last year we did not have vet checks since we didn't have the animals really close together. We were practicing a lot of social distancing. Vet checks are back this year. So they will be part of check-in in the mornings um, for most of our species in the mornings. So you'll have to go through the vet check with your animal um, at your check-in time. We always ask that you have blankets off your animals if that's something they have, that they're haltered if that's something they can be basically. Um, it helps us move through those vet checks faster. So your animals will be vet checked, you'll be checked in. And um, so vet checks are mandatory for every animal, um, every species except for dogs. Um, obviously rabbits and cavies aren't coming on the grounds this year, so they don't have vet checks, but dogs, pocket pets and cats, because we have uh, vet records on those guys. And horses have the option of doing, attending one of the free vet checks um, that are offered, or they can provide a health certificate within seven days um, to come on the ground. So, but the rest have to come in during that designated vet check-in time. Um, this year, since we're doing one day shows, you guys, a lot of our market animals, um, we will be weighing them basically throughout check-in, kind of how we did last year, if you were here last year. So more of a way off the trailer style. You'll go through vet check. The vet will look at your animal. If they give you the all clear, then you can come to the barn and we'll get your animals unloaded. You'll find out where your stall is. Um, and then we will send them across the scale um, to get their weight so that we can get those weight classes posted as soon as possible. And then those day stalls that we're going to have everybody stay in this year, um, they will be assigned by superintendents, so we won't be doing show out of the trailer. Since there is the um, public is allowed and everything, grandparents are allowed, we want to make it to where people can walk through the barns and see the hard work you guys have put into your animals. So that's the gist of what arrival will look like. Like I said, um, we'll be coming out with, there's A, more details in the premium book, and then we'll be coming out with these little fair checklists that give you a little more details and we'll have all the sign up links once we have those ready. All right. Um, this guy, I'm not sure if this is actually how it's gonna roll this year, but just so you know, there is a chance um, that when you come in for project drop off or to check in with your animals, there is a chance depending on what time of day it is that you will be asked to go around the one way loop, which is the scenic drive, right? Because for our animals, we wanna be right over here. 
But if they tell us to go all the way around the loop, then we're gonna be kind and follow instructions and go all the way around the loop. The dome that Julia was talking about for tabletop exhibits is right here. Um, so you won't have to go all the way around the loop. You might have to go all the way around the loop afterwards, but that is pre-fair, so probably not. So you'll probably be able to just drive right in, huh, Julia? Yep. So just be aware, the general rule for the parking and everything, you guys, is be kind, be patient. Um, we're only a part of the fair, so we want to make a good impression and um, plan ahead, especially if it's Wednesday, the, I don't know what Wednesday is, the 4th um, through Sunday, the 8th, expect this one-way loop, most likely. Um, I think those are the right dates. You guys know what I'm trying to say. So, all righty. And, oh, I didn't even see this slide. Look at me go, you guys. Um, this is kind of accurate, not really. So, what I'm going to tell you is the pig is right. The pig is right and the cow is right. These are our barns, everybody. So when we come in, we will have vet checks out in this parking lot, most likely. Um, our pigs, our sheep, 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 and our goats will all be checking in, installing, and showing out of our hog barn this year. So this is the barn where pigs, sheep, and goats will be. Our beef will be staying in their beef barn and showing in the quad here. And our poultry, since we won't have the giant tent like we do on normal years, they will be in what is normally our sheep and goat barn. So we'll have signs and everything to direct you guys and people. Um, and then horses will be over here by the arenas. So that's, and then the dome. We move this clover over to the dome this year. That's what this would be like. All right, so the last thing, or one of the last things you guys is barn life. What we expect, it looks a little different this year, right? Cause you guys aren't camping out like this dude with your, your hammock and, and all your snacks and you're not camping out for an entire week at the fair, but there's still some things that are gonna stay the same as far as expectations. So you are responsible for your animals while they are on the ground. They need to constantly have water. Um, if you are choosing to feed them or have feed available to them during the day, that is your responsibility. Um, but water is an absolute must, even just for day stalling. Um, and remember, this is to my parents that are listening um, and my older 4-H members. It is your 4-H project, right? You guys have done all the hard work on them. Make sure that you are doing the work at FAIR. Um, we don't allow professional fitters. We don't allow parents to do fitting, that type of stuff. It is the 4-H members project. Obviously, if we've got younger members and stuff, um, smaller members, they're going to need help with stuff. Um, and that's totally fine and reasonable, but they need to be doing the work on their animals. Um, our day stalls, since we do have to turn them over, disinfect them every night for the next species, you have to completely clean them out. That means any shavings, any poop, any trash need to be completely cleaned out before you leave. Otherwise we will slap a fee on you because that means that I will be out there cleaning stalls and I will be nine months pregnant at the time. So um, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so with that in mind, we're gonna have you make sure you clean your stalls before you leave you guys. And um, be prepared to chat with the public or whoever in the barn about your project, what you love about your animals, how hard you worked on your animals. And then once again, last year we didn't have wash racks, wash racks will be available. So again, it's always best to come with your animal as clean as possible, but these will be available if you want to use those when you get there for our larger livestock um, or even our horses. Let's see. I'm not gonna read all these, you guys. The big one here on fair show ring etiquette, fair etiquette, we are competing, right? And we have, it's great to be competitive. That is the nature of a 4-H in this part of 4-H at the fairs, we are competing, but we're also still learning, right? This is a learning opportunity. 
and we're about more than just the fair competition. So we're still wanting to practice respect, responsibility, um, fairness, caring in our citizenship and everything when we are at the fair as 4-H members. And so fair's supposed to be fun, keep that in mind. Um, on those hot days and everything, um, our, our superintendents are volunteers, everything like that. So, let's see. And then the junior livestock sale. There is more info to be coming about this. I didn't have quite as much info from the sale committee um, as I was hoping to tonight, but for our kids raising market animals um, and hoping to qualify for the sale. So every um, member so can sell one market animal that qualifies. So it has to meet weight requirements. Um, it has to have shown everything like that, um, but you can sell up to one animal. So the sale this year is coming back and a really exciting part of that is that buyers can bid in person or online. They are doing an online um, auction that, that runs at the exact same time. So if you guys have family members, if you have friends from out of state, if grandma and grandpa wanna get on and watch and bid, um, and bid stuff up, they can absolutely do that without having to be here this year, which is super exciting. So for my market kids, make sure you line up at least one buyer for your animal prior to the fair. If you wanna make good money, you line up two, and then they bid each other up. Um, but make sure that you have somebody, you've gone out and you said, I worked really hard on this animal. Um, it's looking really good. Do you wanna buy him? Um, and you line, you line up a buyer to attend online or attend in person. And then there is a nomination. You do have to nominate your animal that you wish to sell because most kids have more than one potential um, eligible animal to sell. So you have to say, this is the one I wanna sell and you have to do it by Friday at 2 p.m. Um, so that's an important deadline. And then all those sale animals, will be coming back Friday afternoon, evening. Um, I don't have the specific times on that quite yet to settle in for the night. They'll be stalling overnight um, so they can be nice and calm and ready for the morning and we'll verify IDs and everything on them then. And the sale will be starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday the 7th this year. So they are doing a morning sale. Um, because we weren't sure what the number restrictions were going to be and everything on the ground. So 10 a.m. sale time and Grand and Reserve Champions, as always, must sell um, at the fair. So the only way that you would be able to sell more than one market animal is if you have more than one Grand or Reserve Champion animal, which does happen every now and then. So more information to come out on the sale um, I believe there's going to be some type of platform where you guys can put up a picture of yourself and your project animal or something like that um, for add-ons potentially prior to the sale starting up, but I don't have all those details. Let's see. All right. Huh. This means it's the last slide. I don't think, do any of you guys know what Homeward Bound is? Have any of you watched that? I mean, that's not our age, Julia. <laughs> Anna and Elena are shaking their heads, so I should probably find a more <laughs> recent picture. It's a great movie. Anyway, um, and on time, here's my dog coming to say hi. Um, this is Angus, everybody. So um, step 11, go home. So this looks a little different, right? Usually, especially if you're on the animal side, you stay all week and then you go home at the end of the week. Um, on our general FCS side, FCS side, your projects will stay all week this year, which we're very excited about. So everybody can see your hard work and you can see everybody's hard work. Um, so your projects will be released Monday, August 9th. And I'm not sure if that time still stands, Julia, or, okay. 4 to 6 p.m. So basically same place you dropped them off, you'll pick them up. Um, and like Julia mentioned earlier, um, 
if you have ones that are qualified for state fair and stuff, you'll come pick up your ribbons and everything, and then you can potentially take them over to the, have us take them over to the office to send down to state fair. Um, for animal release times, this year, since they're basically one, one day shows, um, your animals will be going home at the conclusion of each show each day, um, with the exception of obviously hogs will go home after their show, right? They're staying the night before and then any market beef staying after the show to go through the sale can stay. Um, but basically your animals will all go home at the end of the show. And then the only animals that will need to come back Friday are those uh, animals going through the sale. Um, that's basically it. Once again, follow the traffic instructions, be nice to people, but most of our animal shows should be wrapping up before the traffic gets pretty crazy. So we did do that hopefully intentionally. So with that, hopefully you guys don't feel like this right now. Some of our new members, it can seem like a lot to take in for fair 4-H first year and especially 4-H COVID or halfway COVID year can make you feel like this, but you guys have all gotten this far. You're doing amazing. Um, keep asking questions. Um, as you go, don't leave your fair entries till the last minute because the earlier you ask the questions, the better we're able to help 